I want to take a few minutes to reflect a little bit on our past year. You know, I, I thought a little bit about just some of the, the things that we do in Rotary, and I asked the question, if you don't think service above self is important, what's the motto with you? <coughs> motto is a wordplay there. Uh, Thank okay. you, Bill. <laughs> One person. So, you know, when the, the founding fathers of Rotary came up with service above self, they were just words. They're just some good words. But they're words that are written down, they're put on websites, and they're said. What gives service above self the weight, what makes it go from a motto to mattering, is what you do. It's what we did as a club this year, the prior years. It's what the clubs around the world do. We constantly make those words matter. Your actions make the, the motto matter. It's what makes it tick. You change lives when you take those words and put them into action. And I'm proud of the, th the things that you've done. And tonight, today, we're going to spend just a few minutes. I'm going to give you a few isolated examples of where I've seen service above self. Now, when you do something like that, you run the risk of not listing everybody. And I want you to know I'm proud of everybody's contribution. But these are some examples that are a little more intimate for me that I can tell a little more conviction, and I think they, they do paint a good story of what this club represents. You know, when we started the year, my family had just come off the tragedy of losing our son. And that was a difficult time, huge hole in our hearts. And I came to a point where Michael Gardner came up to me and said, Derek, do you want me to take this year? Now, if I was going to know that he's going to run for judge and not handle this month, this coming month, I might have discussed that. But I, you know what? That was a neat gesture on his part. And I did. I thought long and hard about it because I didn't want to be a distraction. And I thought a lot about some of the messages that we conveyed to our son. We, the allergies in this room are bad sometimes. <laughs> We talk to our son a lot about when you have adversity, you have to keep getting up. When you have a bad day, the next morning, probably the most important thing you do is you get up. You get up, you keep moving forward. You keep going to the, the things that you want to accomplish in your life. I felt like I needed to do something that was bigger than me. Now, I don't think necessarily presiding over these meetings is bigger than me, but I do think the things that we stand for, I think the things that you do as a club are bigger than me. And I thought that was the best way to honor my son. I thought if I didn't get up and keep going, what a, what a way to make the words I gave to him disingenuous. How would those words matter if I didn't actually live them? So I said, no, let's trudge on. And you've walked with me during this past year. So I want to just share some of the things that I observed you do with service above self. I start with, you know him as my good buddy, Ted Powers. He's more like a brother, though. He was there. He was there as we walked our son to heaven. He's been there through the entire year. But what really impresses me, because those things, honestly, I didn't have to think a lot about. They were going to happen. They were going to happen. The thing that impresses me is the course that Ted got us started on here at Rotary. He kind of said, let's think about Rotary differently. And he challenged us to think about community service. He got us into the lives of the people that we were giving money to. And now they see us differently in the community. People recognize that Cape West Rotary does more than raise money and give money away. It's, a it's serious about changing the lives. We, st we sit beside kids in schools throughout the Cape School District. And we remind them that their lives matter that they may have tough circumstances, but people in the community will stop their days and come and invest in them. It's a powerful thing. He reminds us that there are people in our community that are disadvantaged. And so he and his wife, Laura, steer the Vincent's Vittles program that helps people who are having a tough, tough road in life. Yeah, they get a meal. But probably more importantly, like the children that we help at Read to Succeed, they see people not in their typical daily life, invest in them, care for them, and love on them. 
He invites people like us and other civic <clears throat> clubs to come in and help out. And I think and I believe the people who helped at Vincent's Vittles this last go around from our club will attest, yes, we feed some people and maybe we help them, but I somehow think they help us more. I just think it's amazing. Ted, you're a great brother, and I appreciate your example. Steve Schneider, we know, is a great Rotarian. Steve raises crazy amounts of money for great causes. He's a great civic person. He's civic-minded. He does so many different things. He brings great programs to our club. He's just a wonderful Rotarian. But Steve and Judy suffered a similar loss as we did. And the thing about Steve that I've admired so much is the way he and Judy were like first responders to our broken heart. Steve and Judy came early, they came often, and they continue to come to help us, to minister to us. And Steve, the thing that impresses me so much, and I, I just, I've been in awe, is how every time I think you helped us, you had to open up your heart wound. You had to open your heart wound to help us heal our heart wound. If there's any greater service above self than that, I don't know what it is. Steve, I, I don't have the words to thank you. I don't have them. You know, um, as a parent, a lot of us think, boy, one day I want to leave something for my kids. Well, with Alex, I'm not going to get that opportunity. The role, though, was reversed. Our son left us an inheritance. He left us the most precious gift that he had. He left us his two children. His son, Dylan, he never got to meet. Dylan and Maddie own most of the real estate in my heart. They can make Papa do anything. But Dylan, when he was born, started off with a little rough life. He, he was struggling for his health, struggling for his life. And I got to tell you, I didn't question God much when Alex died. I started to really get a little frustrated with God when Dylan was sick. I was like, come on, God, I don't get this one. But then I also learned God's not necessarily looking for my opinion either. <laughs> but, you know, I think my prayers were answered. Because one of the neat things about Rotary is this whole vocational thing that we have. We have this diversity of vocations. Well, I kind of get now some of the other reasons that's important. Because guess who walks in Dylan's treatment room when he was in ICU? No, no other than Dr. Paul Caruso. Now, I didn't know Paul much, but I knew him from our involvement with the Hope Children's Home. I figured he was a good doctor, but what the neat thing about this fellowship opportunity with Rotary, when you get to walk alongside some other Rotarians and help serve in the community, you get a peek under the hood. You learn things about people. And I knew Paul and his wife Don. they're all about love. They're all about lifting children up in our community, children that don't have a voice. They provide them a voice. They provide them a home. They do incredible things. Their family's all about love. So when a guy like Dr. Paul Caruso walk in your room, you know he's a good doctor, but all of a sudden you realize when I leave the room, my grandson is going to be loved as much as if I were there. That's another neat thing about Rotary. We get to learn things about people who we walk together with to help people. It's an amazing thing. Dr. Paul Caruso, Don, they do a wonderful thing. And, you know, kind of like Read to Succeed and Vincent's Vittles, I kind of think when we partnered with Hope Children's Home, we got the better end of that deal. Yeah, we gave them a van. We changed it a little bit. But, boy, we got big hearts now. We, we get a peek inside a world that we probably wouldn't trade places with. Those kids over there, they're real heroes. And I'm so proud of our club's commitment to helping them and the work that you did to make a difference in their lives. You know, picking up on this whole vocational theme, Ted Yates, lawyer, has done a lot of stuff in our club, does a lot of things that have helped this club prosper. Ted wouldn't look for this, he wouldn't call for it, he probably wouldn't appreciate me sharing this, but Ted uses that vocational gift he has and he's helped countless people for free. Countless organizations. There are not-for-profits in this town. I know he's done 
just boatloads of legal work for free. And those organizations, because of that generosity of his vocational gift, have prospered and have made a bigger impression in our community. Again, we have service above self that's demonstrated in so many ways that go beyond this club. The reach of the club and the core of its members is substantial. In a club like this, you gotta have some go-to people. You gotta have some yes people. Politicians have yes people, but they're just kind of the lackeys who just agree with them. You need somebody who'll say yes when you need help. And Scott McClanahan, Scott Haney have been my yes guys. I can't think of a time I called them that they didn't respond. And it's just amazing. They're at every event, they're, they're, they're great leaders, they have great vision, they're always looking to do something that bring this club together, make it stronger, make us more connected. If we've had progress this year, I gotta believe it's so much in the connectivity on a personal level that we've had. You two guys have just done a remarkable job and I thank you for that. The last group I'd kinda like to recognize, and I hate to do this because I'm gonna profile, and you know, United States, you profile, that could be dangerous, but not always, but these two tables here have a unique demographic. <laughs> no, they just sit at these two tables. I don't know what you're thinking about. But a little longer in the tooth at these tables, not totally today, but uh, you know, we've got folks that have had decades, decades of service. We have some folks who served at the highest level of club service and district-wide service. We have military veterans who served with honor and distinction and with sacrifice. We have men and women who are mentors, role models, and probably most importantly, encouragers. Can you be encouraged enough in our country today? You people set such a great example that service has no expiration date. That Helping other people never goes out of style. Your role in the club, your activities, the things that you do may have evolved as your life has evolved, but you being here is a constant reminder that the work is never done, that Rotary always has a purpose. And I can't, I can't skip it, but I look at Bill Port grieving the loss of his wife, and he comes in, he's still got the great smile, he still has that inspirational look that tells me everything I need to know. That's the value of staying in Rotary. No matter where you are in your life journey, you always are relevant. Bill, thank you so much. What's the motto with you? Nothing. You make the motto matter. You invested in the Hope Children's Home. You sit beside children and read to succeed. I hope more of you do that in our coming year. There are kids in South Cape that do not have people to read with them. The message of Cape West Rotary stands with those children and tells them that they're important, that they're not forgotten. That message is huge. It will change lives, not today, but forever. The scholarship program, I think all too often I used to think, well, we're giving some money away to some kids in school. When you hear the recipients come and you, they talk about their kids, their family, how it kind of just percolates through their whole household, you realize that's making a change for the better for a long time. You did all those things and you helped a grieving dad. You helped a grieving dad keep a promise. You kept me moving and I appreciate that. This year changed my life forever. You and your work have changed our community forever. And it's a year I'll never forget. And I thank you for this honor. Thank you.